I have a job for you. Jeez, it's not another arc, is it? <laughs> no, not again. This time I need a full-scale home renovation. NOAA Construction and Builders is your design and build partner. We do it all, from additions and dormers to full-scale renovations. Schedule your no-cost design consultation today. Visit us online at noaconstruction-builders.com. NOAA Construction and Builders, through dreams we design, with vision we build. Ninety-five point nine FM, twelve forty AM, WGBB, Muscle Sport Media Live, Monday, seven thirty to eight PM. I'm your co-host Joe Pietel here with Anthony Tuminello. Anthony, what is going on, my friend? Good evening, everybody. How's everyone doing today, tonight? How was the Super Bowl for you, Joe? You earned a lot of money. Hey, you don't want to talk about it, huh? Trevor, <laughs> you hear that? He's silent with the I Super Bowl did. situation. I can't I, say I nothing. I plead the fifth. He can't say nothing. I got rich over he, bet that ta- <laughs> he bet that Taylor Swift and uh, Travis Kelsey were going to get engaged, and he lost all his money. Listen, all I, listen, I won't say how I did, but all I know is I'm a Swifty now. Oh, you're a Swifty. Oh, <laughs> meet you. Meet Trevor, uh, guess what? Dinner on Joey before the never, show. Never, right? never, never. All right, all right. The, Trevor behind the glass, and Anthony, we have a guest in studio, Mr. Billy Richards. We do, we do. Billy, welcome to Muscle Sport Media Live. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Doing good. I'm glad that you're here. Billy has got an amazing story, and uh, I'm glad Anthony uh, was able to get him uh, uh, on, in and on. Uh, uh, Billy is a uh, retired U.S. Marine. But that's not, uh, you know, that that's like the small part of the story, okay? That would be honorable enough, in my opinion, to have somebody that served our country uh, like that with honor. But Billy does all these long-distance runs carrying the American flag. Amazing, amazing. So I, I can't do it justice, Ant, but Billy, Billy, first of all, tell us, when did you start doing this? Like, you know, did you do it while you were in the Marines, post uh, military career, when did you start doing it, and basically why, and then give us a little a little info about what, what you actually do and what the causes are for. You do it for ch- charitable causes as well. Okay, so I started, um, I, stood, I actually did uh, two, I served with two different branches. I was uh, four years in the Marines, three years in the Army, and then um, while I was in my Army time, I was going through uh, the Special Forces program. So while I was in um, holdover for language school, we had a little bit of a gap in training. So a bunch of my friends wanted to do the uh, Army birthday 10 miler, which was a 10 mile race at Fort Bragg. I never did it before, so I just decided to sign up and do it. And then uh, I kind of got hooked on it. So while, while I was in training, while I was in the uh, language phase, you know, I got into like marathon running and everything. So, you know, I actually got yelled at for working out too much in the military. <laughs> Billy's also a uh, fellow uh, personal trainer. Uh, you know, that's how I actually know Billy. And it, it, real quick, not to interrupt, but I call Billy Captain America for obvious reasons. And, uh, you know, I, tell, I always tell a story that, you know, I, I call him that because I've never seen someone that uh, can do what Billy can do. It's really almost superhuman. A lot of people can't even run three, uh, three miles without carrying a giant flag. And uh, as we know, Billy runs 100 miles, so. And C- continue, in, sir. Continue. Okay. He's in phenomenal. I mean, yeah. the people in the radio can't see this, but the people on YouTube that are going to be watching this, Billy's in amazing shape. Uh, he's muscular built, and uh, we were talking in the green room of how he's a marathon runner. I, I, and that's probably the, not a perfect term, but lack of a better term. Yeah, and he also Spartan, yeah, Spartan, Spartan yeah. and he also can power lift. So to me, that's almost like how do you do that? But please go right ahead. I digress. All right, so. I started. I started out while I was in the military, and then um, after I got out, after I got out, I had a little bit of trouble adapting back to society. So I got out in 2012. I wasn't. I wasn't really doing that good. While you know, while I was in um, Afghanistan before I came home, I had, I had a girl ditch me and get pregnant with somebody else's kid. So it kind of messed me up badly. Um, and when I when I got home, like all I did was work out all day, and then when I saw my friends, I would you know, get drunk, not remember what happened. And, you know, so I just kept going and going and going. So 2013 rolled around and I figured I needed something to do with my life, like outside of like just work, school, whatever. I needed like something to give me an objective. So I started getting back into the uh, endurance events again. 
and I did a little bit of everything. So I, you know, I did uh, CrossFit competitions. I won my first CrossFit competition. I, um, I started doing like half marathons, full marathons, stuff like that. And then I found Spartan Race. So like with, um, you know, with Spartan Racing, Spartan Racing is more than just running. It's, um, you know, you have the distance out. Most of them are in the mountains. So like a lot of times you're climbing up steep hills and everything, stuff that's not runnable. You know, like you're, you know, like they're, hardest one in the u.s is uh killing pin some of the ones in which Europe. people ski at sir yeah so and imagine, they, imagine running, running. Yeah. and, uh, uh, they, and <laughs> they send you straight up and down those double black diamond slopes and they'll have like bucket carries sandbag carries like stuff like that and then they'll have walls barbed wire they'll have hanging obstacles like you know nothing ninja warrior based but you'll have like monkey bars rings like mm -hmm. stuff like that but um you know so 2013 i got into that and then um when 2014 rolled around, uh, I wanted to kind of promote doing it to, you know, like to other like veterans and stuff. So I de so I decided to start carrying a 45 pound rucksack. I started doing that before the flag, and I carried that ruck to kind of symbolize like the weight that we carry, like the backpack in the field. Love yeah. it. Yeah, Love and it. Um, well, not just the backpack, but like the burden that we carry, like the uh, ah, okay. like the mental weight and everything. Though metaphor. So, physical yeah. and which is, so, yeah, yeah. Which, which is people don't really understand uh what these guys i mean these are heroes so these Absolutely. guys are what yeah. they don't really understand what they see what they go through uh war non-war just the whole the whole uh it's the commitment yeah the commitment yeah. is just yeah. amazing yeah. those, those are the itself. actual heroes but uh yeah like the, that's that's what he means by it. the weight which definitely the burden plus actually yeah. the weight yeah. yeah it's that double meaning that word absolutely for sure yeah and then um the year fo the the following year it was uh fourth of July, so I attached a flag to it and um you know, ever since then I haven't stopped. So as of this past weekend, I've finished five hundred and ninety seven races carrying the American flag. And um, you know, I've done I've done charitable things. Like I used to uh I used to help out this um charity called Boots on the Ground. So Thanksgiving of uh twenty twenty seventeen I took I took the rucksack I normally run with, and instead of just putting random weight in there, I loaded up with 45 pounds of uh, canned goods, and I did four marathons in four days, and uh, I set up a fundraiser on Facebook. I raised about $3,000 for them, and then the cans that I ran with, the ones that survived it, I donated it back to charity, because <laughs> after the can, I didn't realize like just how much bouncing around with mangled cans, some of them yeah. were like twisted in half and everything, but at the same time, the cans were more symbolic than anything, sure. so... Yeah. You know, the ones that did survive, it got donated oh, back yeah. to charity and everything. And then, um, you know, have you, you know, before I get into like all the crazy hundred mile stuff and everything, though, uh, one of the mo one of the best accomplishments in my mind that I, that, that I did, it wasn't that traumatic of like a physical task. You know, most of the times I ran um, the shortest distance was three miles. The longest one was 14 in Chicago because uh, Chicago PD kind of wanted to show me around town and everything a little bit and mm -hmm. you know they were on bike and they just kept running me all over the place <laughs> but um in 2016 um i was inspired or you know i was motivated by the shootings in baton rouge and in dallas mm -hmm. if you sure. remember those uh, yeah, um, absolutely i just kind of got tired of all the uh the all the stuff the uh police were taking like as far as like the negativity and everything so i decided the go upon myself to kind of use uh social media and spin it to where to show like how the community actually still supports them and how like a lot of what was going on was false so i decided to do a uh thank the police tour so and joey this is this is pre 2020 so yeah. this is pre all that other stuff so yeah. you know they were, you know, they were on board way before. oh absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um, what I did, though, is um, I went out and I purchased um, about 40 American flags. And then I bought a bunch of thank you cards. And um, I set up a uh, GoFundMe, you know, to uh, draw funding to do it. So I decided to run around police precincts around the country with the American flag. And uh, every time I finished a run, I would fold the flag up, give it to the precinct along with a thank you card. That was handwritten because mm -hmm. handwritten, you know, anything handwritten is personal. Absolutely. You know, it yeah. shows that you care. And then I also did a handwritten list of all the donors that helped out. And um, I did this at a total of 39 different precincts. 
So I started it locally. So, I mean, I'm from Suffolk County. So I, before I left, I did every single precinct in Suffolk County. And before mm -hmm. I went on the big trip to show people that I was serious, I randomly drove down to Maryland. I didn't know what I was doing. I was actually in like their headquarters in the ghetto somewhere. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was, you know, I was running with the flag. I wore a set of shades and I was dressed all in blue just to make sure I didn't make eye contact with the wrong people. But, um, I was I was running I was running down I was running down the street and I see this crew of people that seem a, a little bit on the CD like you know gangbanger type side <laughs> and um, I'm thinking to myself I'm like all right this is where it ends but then <laughs> all of a sudden one of them stands up and he starts cheering for me he's like yeah man go get it so and that's pretty much like what I saw like around the country like I didn't see any negativity any Supportive. anything. Yeah, that's you know, pretty like cool. Every, yeah, that, 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 that's, that's cool. actually yeah. astonishing. So you, you you know you think something's gonna go one way and it completely yeah, goes opposite. the other way, yeah. and then that goes to show you never judge a book by its cover. Yeah, never yeah. Judge, but judge a book yeah. by its cover. Hundred percent. You didn't yeah. you don't you don't think they would support you, but uh, guess what? You, a lot yeah. of people support you that, that you don't even realize. Yeah, absolutely. Now you said you want the thirty nine precincts, and how many different? Uh, states and jurisdictions whatever I mean how far did you get doing that oh, my my main priority with the trip was to go to places where there were shootings and everything to honor the fallen amazing. so amazing like th this trip kind of like hit quick like I I took like a week like like literally like less than a week to plan I actually planned it in like one sitting I took a map and then I made sure I pinpointed the cities with um you know, with shootings and mm -hmm. stuff. And then I drew a circle around the country and I played connect the dots with major cities and that's how I put it together. And then I used Google Maps to do the driving distances. And um, I was getting to about two a day. You were doing this all on your own? In the beginning, yes. I didn't get any <laughs> support right away. And even when I did get support, the messages got crossed and everything. That's a lot. Like, of, um, I remember, um, I remember getting to Las Vegas and somebody said they had like a connect there and they told them the story. So I get to the Welcome to Las Vegas sign and they just show up with cameras and I'm like, well, I'm supposed to run. And they're like, what? And then I told them what I was doing. Yeah. So they're like, all right, do you have about two hours? I'm like, yeah. They're like, all right, give us two hours. And then the guy goes to his partner. He's, he's like, all right, we dropped the ball here. He's like, call Fox, call NBC, call this, call that. We're Las Vegas. We do things big. <laughs> call, up, uh, call up the SWAT team officers. They're off today. They're not doing anything. See if you get some of them to run. So they ended up uh, shutting down like a three mile s section of the strip in Vegas. Wow. And I ran with uh, four SWAT team officers and they said to me, they're like, oh, we wish we, we would have got the message right ahead of time. I could have got the whole police academy to run with you. Like, you know, it was, yeah. it was like, an, it was an awesome experience. How about that? How about, how about that? You see, the Las Vegas Strip doesn't just shut down. No, no. no. But they did it for was, Billy. It was, it, was a, it was a little on the fly type thing. I had like a motorcycle escort and everything. But that's, but, but yeah, that's such was, a cool thing. Yeah. I mean, it's so, it's so like completely different. You never hear something like that. that yeah, that, that's, that's what amazes me about a lot of his, uh, a lot of his stuff. I, I got to tell you, yeah. though, being a retired NYPD guy, if I... If I was still on the job and you came and did something, I'd be like blown away by this. I'd be yeah. like, "This guy is like aces for doing this." Joey, very appreciative, would, uh, and you'd be like, you know, carte blanche. You'd have a hall pass for anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joey would put his slice of pizza down, and then, and then, yeah. <laughs> and then he, he would he would shake your hand, congratulate you, and then he would continue yeah. eating the slice of pizza. <laughs> But you would you would have uh, yeah I mean I'm sure these Great guys love. were very receptive <laughs> to this. Too. Oh yeah, yeah no it was, it was amazing. Um, I had a uh, I had a I had a welcome home run that was uh, that was at Suffolk headquarters in Yapank. Uh, mm -hmm. The county executive ran yeah. it with me. Like um, <laughs> yeah, we just did a little quick loop around you know the, the building and everything. Area, the, yeah, yeah. They um, you know I got an award from uh, Tim Sinney. He was the uh, police commissioner yes. at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, they gave me. Uh, signed portrait of the last remain of the Iwo Jima raising signed by the last uh, living Medal of Honor oh, winner. Wow. How amazing is that? Yeah, it was, that is super, man. I was like, I was blown gift. away by everything. It was, it was truly like an awesome experience. Like, it's one of those things where I didn't even want to come home. I just wanted to keep doing it. Yeah. How long did this whole 
trip you know well that right that time, stretch but, you know. i mean i did like a lot of out and backs but the nationwide yeah. trip took me about it took me like two weeks wow and you drove you never took a flight or anything you no drove i drove different... all the way i actually had to get an oil change in california so i could get home because <laughs> I, I put like ten thousand miles on my car because oh, i went wow. as far i went as far south as uh miami uh-huh. As far west as uh, San Diego, and then uh, I came across the top of the country, so I got like the a, whole country. I mean, coast much. to coast, all four ways, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, no, wow. no, no that's no. amazing. I would take a nap when I got to Staten Island. <laughs> 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 and how did you? Uh, I mean, obviously, you, you, it, you, you had a lot of people that were on the you know on the ground and and doing things. Uh, you know, with you and you know, supporting you once you got to these places and all of that. But, oh yeah. Well, like, in the beginning, I had did nothing. Did you? Did you I know? My, I was completely on my own. You had no idea when you when you the maiden voyage of this thing. You really didn't know ahead of time. No. What was going to be happening from one? Not place at to all. The next. I mean, um, Southampton uh, PD. They were the ones that gave me a, gave me a send off. So I did a mm-hmm. local run first, and then I immediately drove down to DC and just. Googled like a random precinct. Like I didn't even know where I was going. I you just I, I was winged at, it. I was at uh, I was at third he precinct. Had God on his side. Yeah. And I ran uh, I ran out in front of the White House and everything. Ran back, handed the flag to them. Then I then I went to uh, then I went to Raleigh. Then I went to Charlotte. Then to Atlanta. Uh-huh. Then to Orlando. And that was about the time of the Club Pulse shooting. So I oh, did wow. uh, I did a little minute of silence over the internet over yeah. at Club Pulse. And then I ran back, and I was just giving the flag to, like, the first officer I could find, it, you know. But um, in Miami, I got there after duty hours, so, like, I just gave it to the desk person there. And then mm. they, you know, because I also, I also slipped a card in, like, um, you know, like a business card with yeah. each one so, they, so the police knew how to contact me. So, I mean, I got a bunch of reply emails afterwards. Sure, I would but, hope, um, yeah. It, but after Miami... I drove all the way to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and that's when I realized like how big the Florida Panhandle is. I thought I was never <laughs> going to get out of Florida, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like you, you, you go through yeah. Panama City and all that. Yeah, stuff. I think right. the Panhandle is actually longer than like <laughs> like yeah, it's, it, it's pretty long. But once I got to Mississippi, uh, that was a special one. That was an invite. Um, there was a Marine that followed me on Facebook that uh, his brother um, was was killed in the shooting uh, the prior year, and. Um, they were the ones that told me how to reach out and get media contact and like really yeah. get things going. And then once and then once I got that, the next city was Baton Rouge. And then after that, Dallas. Dallas was pretty interesting because they got the messages crossed. So they just threw something up on Periscope. And then once I got to El Centro, all of a sudden these media vans just jumped out with cameras and stuff. And like, and then um, after this was all said and done, I got. I got interviewed by Tommy Lauren, if you know who she is. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I was on, I was on her show, I was on the Blaze. Very for that. cool. Yeah, that's when she was but, on the Blaze. Um, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Hey, can I ask you a question? Did you ever contact Tunnel for Tower? Uh, Tunnel for Towers? Uh, no, I have not. Yeah, that's something. I mean, Tunnel I, I, Two Towers. Tunnel Two. I'm sorry. Tunnel, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tunnel yeah. Two Towers. Yeah, because this sounds almost like it really does. Very, I mean, yeah. like you know, a. a much longer <laughs> version it's, of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I would literally, uh, you know, try to get involved. That's one of the biggest charities. Yeah, yeah Marky Mark's uh, very yeah, big in that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Mark Wolver, you don't call him Marky Mark. Oh, yeah. I'm old. I call I him Marky Mark. Marky Mark, too. <laughs> I think he gets mad at that. <laughs> Does he? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Marky Mark in the So if you, ever meet, if you ever meet Mark Wolberg, <laughs> don't tell him that okay. Joey calls him Marky Mark. <laughs> I'm a fan, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, no, I yeah. I say it with love, of course. No, Mark Wolberg's awesome. I love his movies. But now you... You're saying you're carrying now. I went on. You know, and give out your Instagram for all your social. We're not done yet, but I mean, just give it out yeah, while so we don't lose time at the end. I'll yeah, make sure people find you. And it's Billy the Ultra Beast. Billy the Ultra Beast, and mm-hmm. it, it's it rings true. Definitely check no this doubt. guy. Now I was looking at your stuff. You're saying you're carrying a flag while you're running. We're not talking about yeah. a little bandana. No, no. So no it's a like, so oh, those little paper flags they give out at the airport. You know, when the it's president. A, comes. It's a full size three by five American flag. With the pole, yeah, and the pole is uh, PVC. 
But still, you're carrying so, a bit. I mean, well, so the, it's, PV, the PVC is actually heavier than a regular than a regular pole like you get at a store, and then. Yeah. Um, but it's also indestructible. So, like when I do the obstacle races and stuff, like if I accidentally slip, I don't have to worry about snapping the, the pole. Really, right. So yeah. let, let's just break that down. Obstacle races, yeah. right? Where you need limbs. <laughs> Billy's yeah. How do you cl a, climb and, okay, and so, dig so, and do all of this crazy uh, stuff? Whilst carrying said yeah, flag, that's, that's what's amazing. <laughs> okay, so I figured out the barbed wire crawl. I just roll under the barbed wire and I spin it over me like a helicopter, and it never mm. hits the wire or the ground. So, and I figured it out because usually and your skin don't touch this barbed wire either. I hope because no. that's more important than the PVC bike. <laughs> well, maybe the flag you're a marine. Well, so, some guy, of the obstacles, you know. like if there's stuff where I need to like hang with two hands, I'll hand the flag to a yeah, volunteer okay. do the obstacle it's and they'll the least, get back. You know, uh, but uh, but I've <laughs> but I've um, slack are you? <laughs> but I've but I come on. But I figured out ways to like do like jump over walls and stuff with it. So with like so I'll so like I'll roll it and then I'll chicken wing and then. I'll hook up my left leg, and as I'm rolling over, I'll kind of spin it like a bow staff. Really? I thought you just run through the walls. That doesn't, you don't do that? Jeez. This no, but this, I, I mean, I, this is less impressive now. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I'm just, <laughs> no, I, this is truly super. Spartan human. race, that type of thing, you yeah. know, they, they had a, a, a a lot of different things they came up with. Uh, what was it? M Tough mutter and all yeah. that. But Spartan, That's, like I was telling you in the green Spartan, room, man. my buddy Mikey, yeah. Mikey Crazy Hawk. Uh, oh, uh, that guy, uh, Mikey. Yeah, you guys would be best friends. Oh, Mikey, Mikey, crazy. Horse. But he's he's also an army veteran. Yeah, and yeah. he does. He's a Spartan athlete. Uh, he was sponsored. I think he still is by Blackstone Labs. Mm -hmm. And PJ is out. Mm -hmm. PJ yeah. back oh, on. Right. Yeah, yeah, Welcome yeah, home, PJ. Yeah, PJ's a very good dude. Good yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, Mikey explained to me about Spartan because I didn't know it. Yeah. This when it first came out, and he's showing me and telling me, and I'm like, "How do you do this?" So, we, I give you guys credit to do that just on its own. We should get these two together. We'll yeah. I'll, we'll, we'll just forget all oh, careers right. completely and just follow these guys. The Mikey and Billy show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, geez. So, um, oh, before before we run out of time, um, I mean, I'll come back for a part two if you guys want to have me. Well, we're <laughs> always down yeah. for everything. Yeah, it's cool. This is but, um, much better the, than uh, me talking myself. Yeah, the, um, that's true. <laughs> the hardest the hardest thing the hardest thing that I, that I, that I've done physically and I'm actually still feeling the repercussions from it was. Um, um, at the end of 2018, I was doing this um, 750K and seven day thing. It was the first time they said it, so I was the first person to ever finish it, and I carried the flag the whole way. But while I was doing that, I, I found this dude, David Goggins, if you're familiar who he yeah, is. Yeah, of course. But uh, I was listening to his story about how he portrayed himself as a regular guy who turned himself into this monster who started breaking records and stuff. So. I started thinking to myself, I'm like, wait, I'm just the dude too. I can find some kind of record to break. So I looked up the world record for most 100 milers in a year. And it, at the time it was held by this guy, Ed Edinghausen, it was 41. So I went and researched all these races and everything. And I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I'll ever be able to afford this, but you know, I'll, I'll wing it and I'll start it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So I, st you know, the fir very first one I did that year, I actually drove down to South Carolina from New York to do it, which I don't recommend because getting back, I almost died about 50 times, but, um, <laughs> I, I ran it and I, and I won the race. So then the next week I found this, uh, skydive ultra, even though they didn't have the skydive because of the weather, but, um, I found the skydive ultra and I set my fastest 100 mile time like the following weekend. And normally with these hundred milers, like the very first one I did put me in the hospital for three days with rhabdo. But, um, and rhabdo, explain what rhabdo is. Okay. Rhabdomyolysis. I mean, most people think it's dehydration, but they're not right whatsoever it's about your that. Kidneys completely shut. Okay. Down. So wow. it's, it's cellular death by overexertion. Mm. It's when your muscles literally start dying and the cellular components you know, like your myoglobin and, and uh -huh. you know, your creatine kinase and all that stuff leak into the bloodstream and then they jam your kidneys up. I mean, luckily I was hydrated because I was still peeing clear, but usually like one of the telltale signs is your your piss comes out Coca-Cola color. Or that's how you know you yeah, have it. It's like your Billy Rubin and all that. Yeah, yeah. like you're, you're pissing yeah. out muscle blood basically because yeah. that's what myoglobin is. Wow. You know, but, um, but yeah. So you exerted yourself so much yeah. that... This occurred. And you know, it, it, as sad as it sounds, I <laughs> I looked at that and I thought to myself, I'm like, I didn't know I had that in me. 
like I literally exerted myself to cellular death. It was almost like I was and, proud of it. And you know, <laughs> Joey, you know when I explained Live to you, to tell the tale. Yeah, I explained to you when Billy was coming in. That's the that's why I said, well, he's a bit crazy. And this is one of the reasons. But this yes. is good crazy. This is like freaking yeah. balls, like church bells crazy. Yeah, stuff. I love that. I love that term. I, I, I love Different that term. than my crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> go ahead, bro. Go ahead. No, but like some of the stuff I went through that year. So I ended up, um, so in 10 months, I ended up finishing 35, 100 milers with uh, five DNFs. So DNF means did not finish. And now, those, what was the record? This The record had? was 41. And you did 35 with how many DNFs? five and the shortest dnf was still 52 miles okay so for four, and then i also did a, a 51 mile race too so i can get in the bat into a uh, bad water but um you know bad water got shut down because of covid the following year but um so four so 41 times in 10 months i did 52 miles or longer and 35 times i hit 100 miles now this is running now, like yeah. Like it, well, it's, it's a right trail right run, so you're not out on the roads yeah, like, like a marathon. You're climbing mountains. You're, you know, there was one where, and it's like an open course too. There was one where I actually got shot at. You know, like <laughs> yeah, and that was just Yo, because there were random target shooters uh, out in like Arizona. Ladies that, and gentlemen, you know, this is definitely going to be a part one. I was going to yeah, say, yeah, we one. haven't even scratched the surface. Yeah, yeah. Now you're saying you're running a hundred miles. Yeah. How long does this take? I mean, do you do you take okay? So the stop is the, there like pauses in this thing. You have to get from point A to point B within the cutoff. So okay. a standard cutoff is thirty hours. Sometimes, like if you're in the mountains, they might extend it out to like thirty six or forty or whatever. Okay. And then uh, one of the races I did was a twenty four hour race. So I had to break in under twenty four hours, and that one I was under a lot of pressure because I was getting in. Uh, uh, that was the one that put me on the cover of the American Legion magazine, and uh, I had just like tore my shin and everything like a couple weeks before so somehow with a with uh extremely bad shin splint to the point where my leg was the size of an elephant and i had to get 100 miles in under 24 hours and if you get 100 miles in under 24 hours you're basically considered a badass so that's that's oh, hard to oh, do that's that's <laughs> how you become a badass Bitch, I, I mean ge i mean generally a 100 mile race has about a like like the easy, like the easier ones, and easy meaning, I mean, not on rugged terrain or anything. Yeah. Generally, they have a fifty percent completion rate. But some of them, like, you know, some of them, like uh, the Bloodroot Ultra, two of us finished. Out of, uh, I mean, out of that I, one was a short, small one, and it was like six people. But ge generally, the field would be like between twenty and fifty. But then there's some bigger ones, single digits, like Leadville, like Leadville, one that there's a lottery drawing. That one will draw like two hundred people or so. That's but, amazing. Billy, you're going to have to leave it there, but we're yeah. not going to leave him there. We're going to no, have him no. back. Yeah, we're going to Definitely. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, give, give your uh, your Instagram and stuff out again. Okay, my Instagram is Billy the Ultra Beast. Billy the Ultra Beast. So make sure you go and follow him there. And we also want to thank NoahConstruction-Builders.com once again for being the title sponsor. Billy, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, thank you for having me. Muscle Sport Media Live for Anthony, Billy, and Trevor. I'm Joe. We will see you guys in a week. Yep. We haven't even... That was awesome. Noah, I have a job for you. Jeez, it's not another arc, is it? <laughs> no, not again. This time I need a full-scale home renovation. Noah Construction and Builders is your design and build partner. We do it all, from additions and dormers to full-scale renovations. Schedule your no-cost design consultation today. Visit us online at noahconstruction-builders.com. Noah Construction and Builders, through dreams we design, with vision we build.